back in the field with the track stars Ryan Wright, Sean Tanner, DJ Jeremiah. Um, as we announced earlier in the show, um, our co-host, friend, family, uh, Ryan, uh, lost his dad this morning. So it, it, it brought up some questions. And um, as you know, you guys have been you guys have been praying about that for a while now. Uh, we've been asking you to pray for almost three months now. And it brings up the question, uh, what do you do when you've been praying for something and you consider God to be a healer, you consider him to be a provider, and it doesn't work out the way you've been praying, um, and it doesn't work out the way you prayed, what do you do with that? How does that affect your faith? How does that affect your opinion of God? Um, at, I can speak from my experience. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have heard my song, um, A Song for Chi Chi, I did for FMG, Independence Day Volume 1. Um, that song came out of a place where I was still dealing with it, honestly, during the song, where um, there was a friend I had at my old church. And um, her thing was, she was, she loved God, but she never wanted to admit it. She never wanted to say it out loud. She never wanted to claim it. And um, I talked to her and I tried to encourage her and encourage her. And she started getting, you know, warmer and warmer to it, to where we had like a little small group. And she finally was able to pray in front of the whole small group. And she was making all these strides. And all the way to the point where we had this Christmas uh, like event for our, our, our college group. And she performed. She danced at it. And I was just like, man, you know, I've been praying for this girl. She's, she's you know, excited for God now. She's, she got over her fear, her shame of being a Christian. And she was on fire. And then the next day I heard, right after that performance, she got a sick. She had something wrong with her back. And um, I started praying that she'll be healed. I started praying she'll be healed. Please, God, heal her, bring her up. I know you have a plan for her life. I know, you know, you didn't do all that for her for nothing. She, there's people she's going to reach. There's young women she's going to reach, all that. And I remember I was praying one Saturday morning. I had been trying to make it to the hospital. I've been, I was getting sidetracked. And I was like, all right, I'm going today. No matter what, I'm going to go down to the hospital. It was a Saturday morning. I prayed one more time. I was like, God, I believe that you can get her up out of that hospital bed, and she's going to go on to help tons of people. And um, I checked my messages before I left. And one of the messages came from her cousin, and it was the night before. And the message said that she had already died that Friday. And I just remember feeling all kinds of emotions, like, God, why? First of all, the biggest thing that stuck in my mind was, why did you let me pray for her if you already knew she was gone? That, I just couldn't get over that. Why would you let me think that it was possible when it was impossible? You see what I'm saying? Um, and that haunted me for years and years and years. Like, And it affected my faith. Like, How could I ever pray for something so big again? How could I ever have confidence that... Because the way I'm wired, I don't want to ask if I already know that's not your will. If it's not your will, just tell me. I won't even bother you. Um, so that's what I dealt with a lot and and I had to really fight with that and it wasn't until I wrote that song where I kind of got all my emotions out and realized that you know it is you know it's his will so what what do you guys think how do you deal with that like for the people out there who pray for Ryan and they thought that he was going to be okay, his dad was going to be okay what do you say to him yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, would, I mean, I would say that, you know, God can heal on whichever side of eternity he desires to. And um, it became evident um, to us in particular that, you know, near the latter part of his father's life, that he was really suffering and that there were just so many different consequences or not consequences, circumstances surrounding um, his situation that, you know, I feel like God did answer our prayer as it relates to, you know, relieving um, Ryan's father of suffering, but it just wasn't the way that we thought he would. So, I mean, that's what I would say. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to end myself with it. Um, I think it does question the faith. Um, like I was saying in the entertainment report, um, I really wanted that for Ryan. You know what I mean? Not even, not even for um, you know how some people say you you done stuff for yourself. Or I really wanted that for Ryan. Like I really wanted that for him so bad because I know he wanted um, he wanted his daughter. Um, he wanted his <clears throat> I'm sorry. He wanted his daughter to see her grandfather. You know what I mean? He really wanted that. And I really wanted that. 
important. And I remember the last time I talked to him, we prayed on the phone and everything. And he was like, Jay, you know, um, if it's God's will for me to go, then he's going to go. You know what I mean? And um, when, when he said that, I was just like, but I, just, I don't know. I mean, like, we're going to pray for that too, but we're going to pray that he get healed. And, you know, it, it, it makes you, it don't make you question your faith. It just makes you question, like, God, like, why didn't you want to heal him? Why didn't you want to do that? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying, like, and, 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 like, we got into a big, deep conversation, probably was going to talk about it in a few minutes, a few seconds, um, that, like, why not? You know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you want to? So, either, like, and what I thought about, and, and I agree with her on this, about healing is, like, maybe God felt like, you know, everybody has a start and end date, you know what I mean, on their tombstone, and he was just like, you know, maybe if he got out of it, like I know one thing Ryan was talking about, like if he got out of it, maybe he would have been in more pain, you know what I mean, maybe he would have had to do stuff that, you know what I mean, that like Ryan or his sister or um, just feeling like it was too much on him, you know what I mean, so maybe God was like, you know what, I'm just going to bring you home, you know what I mean. So I understand that. I always, I get that to the, I understand when God's will is he does what he want to do on the healing part. And I understand that completely. But I think at times it does give you, like, man, that's that's a hard one. I think the thing I struggle with is that I know everyone's life has a, a start and an end. So it's like you have a purpose, be it 20 years or 95 years. So I guess the hard thing is if you're praying are you ever, I guess, are you ever at a point where someone may be sick or something and you're okay with them passing? Or are you always going to pray for them to stay alive? Like, what if your grandparent is 95 years old and struggling? I feel like you're more at peace if you feel like they've lived a peaceful life. Like, my grandma, she passed in 2008, but I wasn't praying for her to stay alive because she had been in a nursing home for six years and she had lived a peaceful life you know she was saved always on fire for god just the most peaceful woman i ever knew so i didn't pray for god to revive her i just prayed for her to go peacefully mm -hmm. but it's like if someone was 25 it would be hard for me to say oh god just let them pass but i feel like maybe i should be at that point is that the better thing to do than to pray for someone to stay alive because we don't know if it's time for them to go no matter how much we pray mm -hmm. They're going to go. And that, and that goes back to what we were talking about in the break is we all know that whenever you pray, the end of the prayer, even Jesus had to say in your will, whatever your will is, um, it's just hard to figure out. When you figure out that the will was, that it wasn't to be, all those prayers that you pray, how do you ever get the courage to pray again for something so big? Because it's, it's a big prayer to say, this person is out of it. Get them to be completely back into it. You know what I mean? Like, full health, everything again. It almost takes a little bit of your swag away on your next prayer. You know what I mean? It's like, man, should I even be... Should I even be... Pre like, just do whatever you want. I, and I remember getting to that point in, in, in my heart with God after, after that situation um, with my friend. Where I just started being like... If it's your will, then just do your will. You know what I mean? And I don't know if that's good either, though, because then I stopped asking for stuff. Because I would just be like, "What's the point?" Just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being rebellious. I'm just being <clears throat> reserved to the fact that, what's, the, why am I praying? If I, I trust you, whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Uh, but what I learned in that, and going back to her story, I prayed that her life would. I, I wanted her to get back up because I thought her life was gonna reach a lot of people. And I didn't realize that prayer was answered until I was at the, you know, it wasn't a funeral, but like the mm -hmm. memorial. Mm -hmm. And I saw all the people in the room that was affected by her life and how their lives are going to multiply on in the future. And it's like, God can answer that prayer any way he wants. And I think the true thing is, is that whenever you pray, even though you don't know what the answer is going to be, even the, the, the test is to not stop asking but be okay with it not looking like you asked for it. And that's just the hardest thing in the world. Um, it takes a lot of a lot of trials to figure what that that is. But to keep praying, keep asking big, big requests from God, and still at the end of the prayer say, but your will be done. What do you guys think? Oh. Sorry. <clears throat> 
Chuck can't even repeat that question, man. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Got a guest in the building, John. All right. Because this, I mean, I'm, I'm almost asking myself. When you've been hit with something like that, you prayed. You prayed and you prayed. You believed. All the verses, you went through all the verses. Keep knocking and the door will be answered. All the things you, you researched the Bible to find out if this is God's will. And it doesn't happen. How do you get the courage to ask for something else in the future? You know it's God's will. You know all that stuff. But that inward struggle of what's the point of me asking? How do you deal with that? Well, you you ask like several questions in one question. Um, to me, I think it depends on what you're praying for. Is it something selfish or unselfish? You was praying something unselfish for someone else. So to me, just in my opinion, when you have that open heart like Christ to love and to pray for someone else's well-being, your job was done after that. That was all you were supposed to do. However God's decision is, it's not your place to really judge God on why he did that. Because if we get beside ourselves to judge God, you know, and God forgive us for so many things, our job is to love our fellow neighbors, help them, and to continue to worship and praise God, whatever decision he makes in our life or someone else's life, you got to know how to deal with it and keep it moving. That's, that's a good answer. But as a lot of people know, if you've ever been to that place, that's the hardest realization ever. And I mean, I was I was 19 when this was happening, so it was a brand new world for me at that point. I, I at that point it was like, man, God is awesome. He does everything you ask. You I mean that's how it felt. And then when you get hit with something like that, it's like, oh, what, what is this? Um, and the encouragement I would say that just remember why you're here. And I think that I, in a lot of people's conversations, I'm hearing some falsities that I had to learn. God, you're not here to be happy. You're not here for comfort or success or any of those things. Those are side benefits and those are not guarantees. Um, and I think that's the hardest thing to realize that God is not so concerned with my happiness. He's concerned with his glory more so than my happiness. And the only reason we're here is to bring him glory. So if it doesn't fall in line with that, you have no reason to complain. There's no guarantee of your happiness. And when I realized that, that my sole priority on this world was not to be happy, that helped me out a lot. I'm here for God and God alone, regardless of me. And when you get to that point, man, it's a sobering point, but it'll help you. It'll help you get through all the times. And and Ryan, I, 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 I commend him for this, man. On the phone this morning when he talked to me about this, he said he, he went through the verse and it said, um, you got to love God more than your father, your mother, your brother, your sister. If you don't love him more than that, then you don't love him. Like, that's hard. <laughs> and Jesus ain't, you know what I'm saying? Jesus ain't soft with it. Like, he yeah. throws you hard balls. And I think he said, he said, like, I didn't get that until now. Like, his life, he has to keep living because he's here for God, not for his dad or his mom or himself. Woo! You got to get there, though. You got to get there. It's not a, um... And it may be hard, to be honest with you. Like, what you just said about God don't want you to be happy, that's a hard pill to swallow for people. Yeah, and it's not um, that he doesn't want you to. Yeah. It's not guaranteed. Yeah, so you may have some some stuff where you are going through hard times, and God be right there, right next to you, and you feel like, man, he, God, ain't, God ain't nowhere near me, man. Like, where's he at? And he could be sitting right next to you, and you just don't know it because... Like you feel a certain way, you know what I mean? Like you feel a certain way. Like I'm going through all this hardship, and I'm going through all this, and like you said, um, he may, he may, that may be for you. Like the 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 hard the hard times may be for you just to understand that. Like that, I never really thought about it that way. Like God don't really, he he don't want you. He wants you to live for Him versus being happy enjoying your life and all this other stuff yeah you know? and, and that and everything that he allows to happen in your life including this for ryan and us is to make you stronger for the next thing remember it's it's for his glory there's something god needs ryan to do and it's at all costs all costs and once you realize that everything is nothing belongs to you everything is his he can do with it whatever he wants and it's all for him 
Um, if you could get there, man, and that's the encouragement. That's why this show exists. This is your community. If, if you're not there yet and you don't get that, you could reach out to us. You could reach out to other track stars um, throughout the track stars community. That's why we're here. That's why he allowed us to have a body because some of those things hurt. And that's when you lean on somebody who's not dealing with it at that moment so they could be strong for you and then you could be strong for them. So that's an encouragement. If you're dealing with anything, make sure you reach out to us. Fill out a noteworthy form. Send us a contact, us prayer request, whatever you want. That's why we're here. So hopefully that helps. All right, let's get back to some music. You in the field with the track stars. Ryan Righteous, Sean Tanner, DJ Jeremiah. Let's go. Yeah. 